It's party time! Carl and Damon here from Games, Brains and Headbanger Life, GBHBell.com for sure. And it is, of course, They Made What into a TV series as we exit the teenage years of season one of Viva Pinata, the TV show. Two segments, as always, Frida Pinatas and for my next trick. And April 7th, 2007 and April 14th, 2007. So these were separated mm. uh, again. Uh, this might be one of my most hated episode I don't like either segment I like I, I like one little brief part in the, in the first segment and that was it okay we'll yeah. see what that is then segment number one is Frida Pinatas and we begin at Professor Pester's lair he demands his minions assemble and gets annoyed when he sees they're watching the cooking channel while working it's silly it's often very it's a very silly show yeah, yeah. he then reveals the Musitron a robot that will allow him to infiltrate the Pinatas and He's not inside it. He basically is going to use motion control. He's got a motion control suit, so he'll be in his lair controlling this thing. And his basically idea is he's going to use it to persuade the pinatas to do his bidding. And I was like, how? But then you know what? I was like, no, they're all a bunch of idiots. Yep. They're all a bunch of idiots. Uh, so it won't take much. To put it through its paces, he ends up doing a dance to show how to control he is. And I was like, ah, so we're doing that, eh? Filler. Yep. We've got 11 minutes and you're just filling the episode anyway. Yep. The Pinatas were enjoying a show hosted by Hudson, an evening in his honour that he arranged himself and tricked the others into coming. I always do like stuff like that. It wasn't, wasn't a dance, it was um, Michael Jackson's. Was it? Was yeah. it? I, I, Fr- yeah, yeah, the fuller, yeah, yeah, with oh, the zombie one, yeah. Oh, I probably blanked yeah, it yeah, out yeah. then. Uh, Pester's machine robot now arrives on stage and basically goes for a rally cry of setting the Pinatas free from the tyranny of being sent to a party. I was like, okay, I, I like that. The free pinatas movement. Uh, I didn't because, 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 because the whole point in them uh, uh, was them being happy to go to, go to parties, mm-hmm. say, apart from one. I'll say, I'll say two now. But it does go like that. I, I know, yeah, It yeah, does yeah, that because yeah. he suggests they take down Pinata Central. And basically, no one agrees. No one agrees mm-hmm. but Fergie and Paulie. And I was like, well, that's consistency at least. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong, it will still go the way you expect it to go. Of course. But I, I like that. They're more than happy to take part if it means they will never have to go to parties again. Press tells them that the first assignment is simply to sign up others to the course. I was like, okay. And we see Fergie going door to door to get a petition signed. But basically, everybody slams the door in his face because they don't have a problem with parties. Yep. It's part of their existence. He finally gets a signature from Ella, basically because she doesn't remember anything and she keeps forgetting what he's there, f- there for. Yeah. So he inevitably gets her to sign it. Meanwhile, Paulie tries to talk Franklin into signing it, using guilt to convince him. Thought it was bang out of all of that. Bang out of all of that. Exactly. Manipulation. Later, they managed to trick Tina and Teddy into signing it by pretending they're not cool. Basically, yeah. you're not cool if you don't. You're not cool if you don't sign Again, it. Again, it's bad stories, man. It's, bad. it's, it's like, really it's, bad. It's like, you know, oh, if you don't sign a cigarette, you're not, you're not cool, man. Yeah, you're like, cool, yeah. Man. What age are you? Do you oh. mean? And it's not. It's a bad message. Again, it is. Man, probably, yeah. it is. Pessa's cause is picking up steam, his fans growing, and even even appears on a radio show. His message goes far and wide, and uh, apparently everyone on the island now starts coming around to it after hearing him on the radio. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I think my, 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 my already passed it, but I think the only bit I, I like this episode is when his minions are offering cookies. He's oh. like, I don't want our cookies, and I, 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 I got bloody um, Arnold Schwarzenegger vibes. Oh, of um, well, that bloody put gen- that cookie down. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, a uh, kindergarten cop. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, I mean, Pester and his minions sometimes do have some funny, amusing scenes. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Uh, but the only one who's suspicious is Les, and the anti one still right to the very end almost is Hudson. But he is convinced to join though when Pester, Pester's robot, asks him to be the official spokesperson for the movement. So Hudson's vanity takes over there. Yeah. Refusing to do a speech, wanting action instead, Pester convinces the Pinatas to destroy the Caniata. He's kind of, they're like wanting to do a speech. He says, no, no talk, let's do action, which I thought was cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, however, Les messes with the robot's controls on the back, meaning Pester begins to see basically different things on his screen, his control screen, like a roller coaster, a stampede, and he ends up falling over in his lair, 
breaking his screen. The robot is destroyed, revealing the truth to Pinatas, and Pesta has failed again. The ending is so rushed. It's just like, oh yeah, yeah. Let, let's seize the controls on the back, messes with them, and that's that. It's so, like, oh, okay. It's like they were, oh shit, we've only got 30 seconds left. We've Suddenly, like, we need an yeah. ending. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't like this. I didn't care for this. It's so throwaway. And don't get me wrong, the entire show is throwaway. But these, sometimes you feel like an episode is even more throwaway. Yeah. Yeah, I often find that's the case with a lot of the Pester episodes. I mean, we talked about it in, Don- in Donkey Kong about the the, the um, King Carol uh, uh, always failing, but, yeah. but this is just failing badly, uh, even worse than K. Rool. For yeah, at least constant. K. Rool felt like he occasionally was successful. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, even if he didn't screw it up, yes. Do you think, uh, you, do you remember the episode where um, there's like the talking throat is like God or something, like the powerful, like the, the player, you think it's the player? Did you remember that episode? No. Where uh, uh, Fergie's trying to apply to be like a manager, and like he and and uh, it's, it's like the talking fruit. Oh thing. right, do, the, do you, the the boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think like the boss? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's gonna be completely out of there. That like, the boss could be Les because Les is so he, he's the smart one. No, he's, the, he's like the, the main. No, because the boss spoke with a normal voice. Yeah. Uh, Les doesn't. I think I, th- I still stand by what I'm saying uh, when I said it. Is that that's supposed to represent a player mm-hmm. more than anything else? Yeah. Um, I think you're right. The whole Les thing is like, here's a really smart guy, but nobody can understand him. Yeah, yeah. One who always sees through the lies and the plans. Mm. I actually think Les's existence is only there as he's the MacGuffin. Yes. He's the, oh, we need a way to resolve this. Well, let's say she's Les. Because the rest don't work. Yeah. It's going to come up again. It's going to come up again. <laughs> Segment two for my next trick. We begin to see a magic show that's being broadcast on TV. Franklin is watching and is amazed by what he sees. Seeing that he can buy his own magic trick box, Franklin sends off for it, but gets... Uh, pretty much immediately. I do laugh at stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't even finished the letter. It's already at his door, but it's also being delivered by a snail who speaks slowly, so it's quite, you know, that's silly fun. Yeah, yeah it's silly, yeah. Sometime later, and with his magic wand, Franklin's showing off his tricks to his friends, but failing. The issue is that he thinks magic is real, so he doesn't know how to do tricks. So he's thinking he could just wave a magic wand and something will happen without understanding that magic is tricks. Mm-hmm. That's it. Feeling bad for him, though, Les uses his speed to make his flower trick work. Impressed by himself, Franklin declares that he's going to put on the biggest magic show on for the entire island, and Fergie suggests Les can be his assistant, assistant much to the latter's annoyance. He doesn't really want to have to get involved, and it means he's going to have to work hard to make sure Franklin doesn't look a fool. Yep, constantly, yeah. Which I, again, disagree with the message this episode is sending. But we'll get into that at the end, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. The show seems to be going well, mainly because of Les. Having, war- having wowed the audience, Franklin thinks the wand is magic, completely unaware of Les's help. Les is not happy that Franklin's going to keep on doing shows, talking about going on a world tour and things like that. An island tour. <laughs> Franklin's success makes the paper, papers and Pester reads about it. He decides he wants the magic wand himself to conjure up all the candy he wants. Uh, him and his minions, after some silliness, head off in an airship. A blimp. What? So he thinks magic is real, he's an idiot, and he has a blimp. Okay, okay. Yep. Les is the first to see the blimp floating over the island. Seeing Franklin through a telescope, uh, Pesta sets about getting the wand after some helium hijinks. Wah, wah. Franklin's magic show is getting more elaborate, but Les is keeping the tricks going. Pesta arrives with fake glasses and a nose. I laughed at this <laughs> part. He's got one of those fake glasses and nose. And he goes up to Franklin telling him that he can make his entire audience disappears. He then does this by removing the fake glasses and nose, turns to the audience, revealing who he is, causing them to scatter in fear. Um, so stupid. It's so stupid, but I was like, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Like, they would not recognise him no. but the fake glasses and nose. The ruffians come down and Franklin tries to fight them off using his wand. Instead, it's Les using the magic setup to try and defeat them. And we do get a funny on the nose. He do this occasionally mm. where uh, Pester turns because Franklin asks him, well, how did you do that? Make my audience disappear. And he turns to the camera and says, my sister knows one of the animators. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like some fourth wall breaking this show does. Mm-hmm. Franklin manages to escape, running away, but changes his mind as he thinks he can use the wand. And once again, it appears to work, sending ruffians flying and scaring Pester off. The blimp, though, takes off with Les attached. Didn't really get that. No, 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 I don't even know how it happened. Yeah, and Franklin decides to use the one to save him, but nothing happens. So Les, once again, uses his skills to puncture the blimp. Les falls, 
Franklin thinks the wand has run out of magic and tells Les that he's going to carry on, but even bigger, much to Les's obviously annoyance as well. Uh, yeah, I was annoyed, right, that what they didn't do at the end was reveal that, look, it wasn't magic. It was Les helping you. Franklin go, oh, you know what? Thank you so much, Les, for your help. Thank you for, like, help me and so on. Let's still take this on the road, but now let's kind of make it fun and you be involved more and stuff like that. Instead, Franklin still lives in his world, dream world that he's apparently magic and doesn't know Les has helped. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I feel like that's wrong. It is. It Again, is, it is, it is. It, 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 it not, I'm not saying it encourages lying or dishonesty and stuff like that, but it sort of says, hey, you can get away with this. Yeah, but we we, we, got, we got to look at the mind of a young person, a, yeah. A te, uh, you know, a eight eight to foot. Oh, foot, yeah. yeah, it's hard to put this in an age bracket because some yeah. of the stuff yeah. aimed at older. But I would say anywhere between five, six, and eleven, twelve. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we do, of course. We'll watch it from our eyes, but we can look at it from a perspective as we've done to the show up to de- up to this point. Are you trying to say something? And are you saying it correctly? We've mm. been critical of that in the past. We praised one or two segments for doing better in yep, that. Yep. Uh, this one, I don't think it has a big message. No, no, like no, that. no. I just think there could have been a better ending here more than anything else. But overall, I find these two to be extremely boorish and throw away beyond belief. I'll forget these exist. I'll forget most of this show yep. exists after a long period of time. If you were to say to me, Carl, uh, I'm going to read you the title of uh, some of the early episodes. Can you tell me what happened? I'd struggle, I reckon. Mm. And these will be ones I really struggle, except for knowing what the overarching thing. So if you said to me, oh, what's for my next trick? I'd be like, magic. Yeah. But what happened in it? Don't know. Disappointing because, because you know, I mean, normally the episodes that don't have anything to do with bloody parties mm. are normally okay. But these ones here were just bland. You know what it is? For me specifically, for this, for at least for the second segment, I don't like Franklin. I realise yeah. I don't like his character. I don't find him particularly interesting and the voice actor, while fine, is one of the ones I find least interesting to hear. You know, I'd rather have a Fergie and Paulie episode than a Franklin-based episode. And at this point in the show, this segment particularly, him being a dominant feature, is a third segment out of the last, like, six... Yeah. Just about Franklin. It's sort of like they're, they're, they're trying to push him to make like a third main character. But, we'll just, but, we'll, yeah. no, but we have a whole main yeah, cast yeah, 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 just varying yeah, 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 yeah. up a little bit, you mm-hmm. know? That's what it is. Seeing too much. We've got too much Franklin, basically. Yeah, yeah. Episode 19, free the pinatas and for my next trick. That's our thoughts. You got any? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website where reviews, news and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at gbhbl. Just search for gbhbl and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.